Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Germination Retail Roundtable webinar. My name is Mark Sinkowitz, and I am editor for Germination, and I'm happy to be your host. Today's topic is 2022 Secan Seed Supply Showcase. I'd like to thank our sponsor, which, of course, is Secan, Canada's seed partner. You can visit their website at secan.com. If you have a question at any time during today's webinar, please just type it into the chat box and we'll get to it at the end of the webinar when we do our Q&A session. A recording of this webinar will be available on germination.ca within 48 hours. We have four speakers today. Mira Van Burke is CCAN marketing rep for Southern Alberta and Southern Saskatchewan. Brad Pink. Brad Pinkerton is marketing rep for Manitoba. Lauren Wensley is marketing rep Saskatchewan. And Trent Whiting is the CCAN marketing rep for Alberta and BC. Welcome, everybody. Feel free to turn on your webcams and your microphones. Ah, there we are. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. How's it Hi, going? Good, good. Hope uh, everybody's nice and cold today like we are here in Manitoba. Always nice and cold. It's been a great winter. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, guys. And so, uh, Mira, you're going to uh, sort of open the proceedings here for us. So I'll, I'll turn the floor over to you. Like I say, I'll be hanging out uh, in the background. So if you need any help from me, please just give the word. Proceedings make it sound so like so official there. But yes, thanks, Mark. Thanks for the intro. No um, hi, everybody. Um, good morning, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Thanks for joining us. And if it's over your lunch break, that's awesome. Um, like Mark mentioned, uh, please use the chat box. We like to see where everybody's from. So if you could use the chat and kind of say where you're from. So I cover, like you mentioned, I cover Southern um, Saskatchewan and Alberta. I'm located in Regina. Then we have Brad, who's in Niverville, Manitoba. Then we have Lauren, who's in Lucky Lake, Saskatchewan. So like Northwest Saskatchewan or West Central, sorry, Lauren. And then um, we have Trent, who's like in Lamont, which I always think is the Northern Alberta, but it's Central Alberta. Trent has gotten mad at me too many times for saying that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try to keep it under an hour. We love to talk about this kind of stuff. So we might go over and depending on the questions you guys ask, but like I said, right in the chat group where you're from, um, just so we kind of get a gauge of where everybody's from. So first, what we're going to do is talk about where seed supply is at. I know lots of people are wondering what's still available and what's still out there. So we're going to kind of go by province and talk about what is still out there. And then we're going to talk about new varieties. So what's coming new from Seacan and something that maybe you can grow um, this year. So but first, I'm going to pass it over to Trent. Oh, Jessica from Westlock. Awesome. Yeah, keep writing in the chat. It's nice to see people. Let's, uh, we'll pass it over to Trent for some comments on the year so far. Thanks, Mira. Um, morning, everyone. Uh, it's actually only minus two here, so we're not cold this morning. It's quite nice. Um, some general comments about 2021. Uh, we had a prairie wide drought. I think everybody experienced it. Um, it meant for some very, very challenging. Um, both commercial grain production and seed production. Um, coupled with the drought, we've got record commodity prices. From a seed perspective, we've got very low carryover from 2020. Um, you know, input prices are through the roof. And there's going to be a bit of a sticker shock for seed pricing this year. Um, you know, when you have record commodity prices, the seed price is invariably high. Um, I don't think that there'll be much difference in the differential price over a normal year. But when you start high with grain prices high, seed prices are just going to look high to go along with it. And because of a drought and limited carryover, you know, the newest varieties are typically always in the lowest supply. So um, if you haven't booked by now, um, you're not going to get some already. So get out there and book seed uh, sooner than later. 
from a seed availability standpoint in Alberta, we actually handled the drought, I think, a little bit better. We had record moisture in 2020, which really carried us to a certain extent in uh, 21. Um, most seed crops are an okay supply. Um, the real flag right now is yellow peas. Yellow peas are very short. Um, they're still green peas. Six row feed barley. Um, it's a, a small acreage crop. It's going to be short. There's been a very good demand. Our neighbors to the east in Saskatchewan have been buying as much six rows feed uh, as they can get. So that's one where I would call to action to get out there and book some seed. The rest, I think we're in pretty decent shape from a seed perspective in Alberta. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or whatever it is. Uh, Lauren, coming at you from the booming metropolis of Lucky Lake, Saskatchewan. Um, in Saskatchewan, for seed availability, for the most part, there still uh, is some seed out there. Uh, maybe locally, uh, your seed growers might be sold out, but you just might have to travel a little further. So if you're looking for something and can't find it, just give one of us a shout. We can find it for you. Um, the exception is yellow peas are getting pretty tight. There are still some out there, but it may not get the specific variety that you're looking for. So again, yeah, there is some yellow peas out there. Um, feed barley, there's still uh, varieties like Austinson available, but um, the more forage types like CDC Maverick and AB Advantage, those ones are super tight. And like Trent was mentioning, a lot of uh, Saskatchewan growers are having to bring some in from Alberta just because they're just not available in Saskatchewan anymore. Um, and then the oats, again, oats are getting a little bit limited as well, specifically some of the forage like CDC Haymaker and things like that. So that's where we're at in Saskatchewan. Uh, in Manitoba, the uh, peas, yellow peas are very, very tight with uh, the new uh, mills, the Roquette and uh, Merit Functional Foods. They've really been uh, creating a, a lot of excitement, and enthusiasm for yellow peas. So those went very fast. Our yields were quite low and it takes so many peas to, to seed an acre. So uh, peas are very tight. If you haven't got the, the high protein variety already, then it, it'll be really tough to find some. Uh, we had a really big run on oat seed in uh, November as well with the uh, high, uh, high new crop prices and the high pit prices. A lot of oat seed went out the door and uh, a number of seed growers are already in a sold out position and it, and and struggling whether to bring more in or not. So if you are looking for oat seed, definitely talk to your seed growers so that they can bring some in if they don't have it. Uh, flax, super tight in Manitoba as well. And again, it, it's, it's, it's a hard decision to bring it in wholesale wise because it's worth so much money. They'll really need to make sure that they have a, a sale. So if you're really uh, serious about getting flax, make sure you talk to your seed uh, retailer right away. And uh, feed barley again for the third or fourth year now. I, I'm hearing it's it's pretty tight. It's hard for me to find some wholesale loads. So if uh, if you need some feed barley, definitely get on that. And just a reminder through this all, um, most of these varieties that we are covering today, and lots that even though we're not covering them today, are covered by PBR. So PBR stands for Plant Breeders Rights. So under PBR 91, not only is it illegal to sell the, a protected variety to your neighbor or somebody, it is also illegal to grow this protected variety. So both of those actions are illegal. So farming is risky enough. Um, protect yourself, protect your business, um, protect your neighbors, and just buy certified seed this year because it is available. Um, so just take out that risk mitigation factor of PBR. And then we're gonna get into our variety update. This picture makes me just really want summer because it just looks so nice and nicer than minus 40. Um, there's a lot of varieties here. We are not going to be covering all these varieties. We're just gonna be covering the new varieties. If you still have questions um, about a variety that we haven't talked about, please feel free, like Mark mentioned at the beginning, please go to our secan.com website. Um, Trent spends a lot of time making these beautiful tech bulletins and it's actually really nice because this is the front side, but if you flip it, it compares it. It has the what it looks like in Saskatchewan, Alberta and Manitoba. So you see how Douglas performed in all three provinces. So it's really, really awesome. Um, and also seeing in the chat here, lots of seed growers. 
Once we're going through the different varieties, if you have some of that variety available, like Advantage or Fraser, type in if you still have some. So if anyone's looking, they know that they can contact you. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Lauren to talk about malt barley. All right, so we're just gonna go through a couple of the newer uh, malting barley varieties. I think most people are probably very familiar with CDC Bow and CDC Copeland, which are the two on the outsides of this picture right here. Um, I'm gonna talk about CDC Fraser and CDC Churchill. So I'm not sure if everyone has caught on to that little naming strategy that's <laughs> that we've got going on. There's a little theme there. So it goes with the rivers. So CDC Bow River, CDC Fraser and CDC Churchill are all rivers. So first we're gonna talk about CDC Fraser. So CDC Fraser is, it's been around a couple years now, but it's really starting to gain some uh, market acceptance both domestically and for export. Um, so it's got, yield is around 114% of Metcalf. So that puts you right, uh, very close to the yield of Synergy. Um, and the standability is very well, very good on it as well. Uh, CDC Bow is very well known for its really great standability. Fraser may, might not be quite as good as Bow, but it's very, very close. Um, and it's also got an intermediate rating for Fusarium head blight. This one comes from the Crop Development Center, uh, Dr. Aaron Beattie as well. Um, on the malting side, it's got very high enzyme activity, which makes it a very good replacement for AC Metcalf. So we're expecting some big things from CDC Fraser here in the near future. CDC Churchill is our other uh, brand new uh, malting barley variety. Its claim to fame would be its very, very high yield potential. So uh, Churchill, if you look in the new, the Saskatchewan Seed Guide for sure, it's one of the highest two row barleys, uh, including all the feeds. So it's just as good or better than CDC Austin, for example. So this one still is in market development. Um, yeah, here you can see it's uh, about 118% of yield of uh, Metcalf. Um, and then the enzyme pro profile on this one is very different than um, CDC Fraser. So it's got very low enzyme activity and very low protein. So it would be more of a fit for your craft maltsters or your all malt brewers. Um, one thing that we've been kind of watching uh, throughout the years on this one is because of the very low protein, and high yield potential we're thinking and now you can use pgrs as well i know that might be a swear word this past year with barley the pgrs but in a normal year if that's a thing um we're thinking maybe you can put a little bit more n with churchill and that pgr push that yield even higher and then maybe it won't um, affect the protein quite as much so yes that's cdc churchill for you um, this is just the brand new uh, CMBTC recommended malting barley varieties. So if you compare this to, say, last year's list, you'll see things like Metcalf, are like the older varieties like Metcalf, are slowly starting to lose some acreage and some acceptance. Metcalf is now in third place here, and it used to be in second place. And then the newer varieties, Synergy, CDC Fraser, these ones are starting to make their way up the list. So that's a promising thing because I know farmers are wanting these better genetics. It's just waiting and waiting on the malt acceptance. So I'm gonna turn it over to Trent now and he's gonna go through some of our European barley varieties. Thanks, Lauren. Um, this is a picture, uh, we call it, you might title it the European Invasion. Um, this is a screening an A and a B level screening trial of some genetics from actually around the world. Um, and this goes back to about 2016, 2015, 2016, um, where we actually had a few varieties uh, from, from Europe in a uh, plot situation at Bonacord, just north of Edmonton. And um, it was Jason Lentz at the time was the chair of the Alberta Barley Commission. And he walked in and seen these and he went, oh, I want something like this. And because uh, it was short, strong, strong, and it really stood out. Um, so we've taken it from this stage where we've been trialing them now in replicated trials across the prairies for four or five years to where we actually have. Um, this is a picture with three different uh, genetics across Europe in there. Um, we've got KWS Kelly. We've got ESMA and RGT Planet. So uh, three varieties, uh, ESMA and KWS Kelly will be coming to market this spring. 
Um, Asthma, it's a really exciting uh, Turo feed out of Ackerman in Germany. And of course we had to play up uh, the whole German background, not to mention Mir's background. And I see her dad's on the line too today watching. Hi Hans, how you doing? We'll try not to make too much fun of Mira. <laughs> uh, I think it's a great ad. Um, and it's a, it's a fabulous barley uh, to boot. So just a little bit about it in our own screening trials. Um, it averaged 10%, 9% higher than CDC Austin's in the last two years. Um, it handled the drought way better than I ever expected them to. My, my, in my mind, I saw a short, uh, strong straw two row that would fall apart in a drought. And it really didn't do it in the drought at 21. Um, it still came through all the provincial RVTs near the top of the yield. Um, and yeah, it did, it did exceptional. Um, the, the one unique thing about ESMA and the European barleys that we're bringing to market is that they do have a variety use agreement on them. So what's a VOA? Um, a VOA is basically a farm safe seed royalty. So um, you buy ESMA this year, uh, from your from your seed grower, you'll actually sign a variety of use agreement. And if you decide you want to keep farm safe seed and supplement supplement for years, um, it's going to cost you two bucks an acre. Um, it's not a and it doesn't matter if you're in Alberta or Manitoba. It's still two dollars an acre, and it doesn't matter what your seeding rate is. If you decide you want to seed it at three bushels an acre or, or one, it's still two dollars an acre. Um, Esma and actually KWS Kelly that I'll talk about next. Uh, the disease packages on both of them um, are not ideal. Uh, they, you know, I would recommend under high fertility, high moisture, that you put a fungicide on them. They're, they're really good for that. And I've seen them with a PGR as well. Um, I don't know if it actually hand, helps it at all because they've been so short, so strong straw, and there's been very little moisture that we could actually see it. Um, but yeah, we're really excited uh, for ESMA to hit the market this year. Uh, KWS Kelly, this is a picture I took uh, two years ago uh, at my Nemeo demo. And, and you can really see uh, the height difference uh, between it um, and AA Synergy and, AA and CDC Copeland. Uh, very much like ESMA, it's 10 to 20 centimeters shorter. Um, they're shorter when there's moisture, if that makes any sense. Uh, they they actually elongated this year more than the Canadian genetics did. So um, they, they performed, KWS Kelly actually performed phenomenal. Uh, we've got very limited seed in Western Canada for this spring of 22, but for 2023, it'll be much more widely grown, I think. Um, it's a little higher yielding than ESMA. Um, I'm not sure it stands quite as well, but it's still better than anything I've seen. Um, and it's a couple days later than asthma. So it does have a little bit uh, later maturity to it. Again, poor disease package and that same VOA of $2 an acre. We've got a third variety, RGT Planet out of um, RAGT in France. Um, it's a two row malt that we're actually doing malt market development on it. Uh, it's very similar to asthma otherwise. Uh, so it's uh, kind of a wait and see. We're, we're still just doing uh, limited uh, market development on it in the prairies, uh, but it, I just thought it, it is registered uh, and it will be out there in small scale. You're gonna get tired of me by the end of this. Um, I know Lauren said about AB Advantage, I think Mira might've mentioned it too. It's uh, a two row or six row smooth on out of Field Crop Development Center in Lacombe. And I seen Dr. Joseph Nichira on the line. He's actually the breeder of this um, since retired from FCDC. Um, it's, uh, it's my favorite six row. It uh, stands way better than it should for something as big and showy a plant as it is. Um, it's an exceptional grain yielder. Um, it's exceptional forage yielder. And it's got the most two row like six row kernel I've ever seen in a six row. Um, you know, one of the limitations on six rows is that they usually throw a thinner kernel. Um, I can still remember the day I get a text from two of my members that are cleaning it or 200 miles apart that's weighing 56 pounds to the bushel. 
Um, so it's not a limitation in, or it, 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 it's not that traditional uh, six row kernel. It's more, much more like a two row type kernel. And we have others as well. So uh, AB Tofield, um, it's a shorter, stronger straw version of AB Advantage. Exceptionally good grain yield and forage yield, but it's not that kind of big showy plant that AB advantages, and it does have much more of a traditional six row type kernel. And then coming down the line in a couple of years is actually CDC Renegade, and that's out of the Crop Development Center at the U of S, uh, Dr. Aaron Beatty's program. It's a smooth on two row that yields like CDC Austinson. So it's the top of the, the grain yielding charts uh, in a smooth on two row, which is really exceptional because there's very few uh, smooth on. Uh, two row barley's out there. Okay, as we uh, start to go through some of the wheats and the, and the new wheat varieties, we can't help but talk a little bit about AAC Brannon because it's just been such a dominant variety in Secans lineup and across Western Canada. Whether it's a wet year or the drought of 2021, it just constantly dominates and uh, does so well and i'm sure it will be on uh, a lot of acres again in uh, 2022. this spring we launched uh, a new cws variety called aac starbuck vb which uh was uh, you know we'd, we'd been waiting for this for a long time so we could replace brandon with it we were looking for that variety that had an mr divisarium that could take yield to the next level over top of brandon and that's what uh, Starbuck VB brought for us. So we've got some uh, trial data here on this slide um, compared to Brandon in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and it's really done well all across the prairies. And our seed growers had great uh, uh, feedback with Starbuck in uh, their blow up years of uh, 2019 and 2020. Um, it's got the midge tolerance with Brandon as a refuge, so that's great. It's got the MRD Fusarium, which helps me in Manitoba so much. Not as important as you go west into Alberta, but it's also got a great leaf disease package. It's got a little bit better protein than uh, Brandon. The straw height and strength is very comparable to Brandon. So it's just been a, a great all around product in, uh, in our lineup to overtake Brandon over the next couple of years. So uh, if you haven't tried that yet, definitely give that one uh, a test on your farm this summer. At the same time this spring, we also launched AEC Wheatland VB, which is another midge tolerant wheat that uh, we're super excited about as we go west even more. So Wheatland doesn't have the MR diffusarium that Starbuck has. So for me in Manitoba, especially Eastern Manitoba, we're trying to position Starbuck in those areas. But as we go west, Wheatland with the eye for fusarium and super short, strong straw, shorter, stronger straw than Brandon, has been a great option for people to transition out of Brandon. It's um, almost every time we have a seed grower with Brandon, Starbuck and Wheatland, the Wheatland has been the highest yielding on their farm. So definitely brings the yield. It's got that short, strong straw, so you can really push the, the fertility to it. And, uh, and it's got that, that midge gene, which is fantastic. We always see midge tolerant varieties at the top of the yield pack. And uh, who doesn't want 10% Brandon in with their variety? It's a, the perfect refuge to have in there. So definitely uh, check out Wheatland as you go west. And uh, if you're in Eastern Manitoba, I would really recommend trying Starbuck. So this is my blatant plug uh, spot for midge tolerant wheat. Um, Alberta and Manitoba have been a little later to the midge tolerant wheat game than Saskatchewan was because Saskatchewan was hurt by the midge the earliest. It showed the most economic damage in Saskatchewan uh, many years before we saw it in Manitoba and Alberta. Uh, this past summer, we actually took part in a project with Dr. Tyler Wist with Ag Canada where we went out and put pheromone traps in wheat fields. And, and collected samples of male midge. And lo and behold, uh, there's midge all the way from Southern Manitoba to the North Peace. And in some of us were uh, um, a little concerned about how much we actually found out there. Um, midge tolerant wheat has come a long way from unity and field star days. 
Uh, we now have multiple varieties, not just ours, but there are multiple varieties out there that are top of the yield charts. They're short, strong, strawed. Um, they have phenomenal disease packages to go along with them. They're, they're really, in my mind, the everything for a wheat. And, and how much better can it be to have free insurance? And that's basically what a midge tolerant wheat is. It's free insurance. Sure, you might pay 25 cents or 50 cents a bushel more than a conventional wheat. But from, I see a few of the seed growers on here, they know how much more work growing a midge tolerant wheat is. Um, and to not have to worry about having to go out and check a midge trap at the wrong time, or worse yet, having to go spray for midge, um, because spraying for midge is basically carpet bombing your field with an insecticide. It'll kill everything that's out there. And, and we learn that there are, Mother Nature's great at creating beneficials that will actually attack the midge. So the more we can do to help Mother Nature, I think the better it is for the environment. So I'm, it's taken me a long time to get around to midge tolerant wheat, but I will recommend a midge tolerant wheat now all the time because I think it's just, they're just fabulous varieties. All right, I'm gonna talk about our brand new variety we have launching this spring called CDC SK Rush. Um, clearly, as you can see from this advertisement, we've got some uh, links to the actual Sask Rush lacrosse team, which of course is everyone's favorite, right? So um, a CDC SK Rush comes from Dr. Pierre Huckle at the Crop Development Center. Um, it is a, it's got a very, it's a conventional hard red spring wheat, so not a midge tolerant, like Trent was just going on and on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the midge tolerant wheat. Um, so it's got very, very high yield potential, um, specifically up in the parkland region. So um, talking to some of our seed growers who've grown it the last few years, specifically in the Melford and North Battleford areas, they've been very happy with the yields they've been getting off um, SK, CDC SK Rush. Um, it is also a conventional height variety, so not a semi-dwarf like uh, Star, Starbuck and Wheatland. It'll be a little bit taller, um, but uh, some people are looking for a little bit of extra straw. Often cattle farmers and such do like a little bit more straw. Um, it also has a very strong disease resistance package. Specifically, uh, it has a really strong MR to Fusarium head blight. So this one, yeah, it's one you should look out for. And if you're looking to try some, just reach out to us or whatever. And yeah, hopefully you try some Rush. The next on our list is AC, AC Red Star. Um, I love the Rising Star ad. Uh, I think it's really cool. Um, AC Red Star is is a red water replacement. Um, for those in Alberta and or across the prairies that grew red water, very early maturing, um, stood really well in Alberta. And we're seeing basically the same thing with the AAC Red Star. It's actually a cross of uh, AAC Red Water and CDC Plentiful. So very good grade retention on it, good hard kernels, um, very high falling number. Um, it is not a big a yielder as the full season as a Brandon um, or a Wheatland or Starbuck, but it's really positioned for a, the early maturing market out there. It's got a fabulous disease package, you know, good rust and an MR to Fusarium. Um, stands really good. And the picture in the background is actually Tom Hadway's field at uh, Didsbury two years ago. Um, just, just an excellent variety in that really early maturing um, product. Ellerslie is unique in our lineup and it's unleaded. And what's unleaded mean? Um, it's got really, really short on tips. It's kind of like Brad's head there right now. As you can see, he's got really, really short on tips to it. And we are fun at making fun of each other. Um, excellent yield potential. Um, very good sprouting tolerance to it. It's medium maturing. Um, again, another field from Disbury, from Tom's. Um, it's also out of the University of Alberta breeding program. And, and you can see those just those little on tips going on there. It's got a very good disease package. Um, it's an eye to fusarium and very good lodging tolerance. Uh, the one thing with it, it is more traditional height though. It's a, a full height variety versus a semi-dwarf. Um, so we have a number of members um, in West Central Alberta that are growing it. Um, mainly those where Stanley did very well. Uh, CDC Stanley is a fabulous variety. So we got a piece by Stanley cross there. 
Um, and yeah, it's performing very, very well in the field. Now we are gonna move on to the Durham. These are fully on varieties. I don't know, Brad, you need to take your camera off or something because all I can think about is the little on chips. Um, anyway, so moving over to the Durham's, this is our new CDC Defy. Um, you're kind of going to get an image in your mind of our new ads. It's a lot of like animals. So I don't know, petting zoo vibe. I don't know if COVID is getting to us or something, but you'll see now there's a lot of animals in our ads. Um, and CDC Defy is kind of like the idea of defying the odds. So flying pits, maybe if we get it a little bit. It'd be nice to see if you guys laugh or you're just like near, you're silly. Um, anyway, so the standout qualities of Defy is fusarium tolerance and yield. So if you look in the seed guide, in the Saskatchewan seed guide, it is the highest yielder in the Durham zone. I believe it's 112. Um, and that's pretty much on par with what we're seeing across Saskatchewan right now and Alberta for CDC Defy. So um, mainly more in Saskatchewan, I would say that seed growers this past year on like two, three inches of moisture, like not very much. It was still the, still the highest yielder. It obviously stood well because everything stood well this year. Um, but it looked, it yielded always in the one top one or two this year. So very happy with CDC Defy. Fusarium tolerance, we in Saskatchewan like to be special. Uh, we have the little MS star, um, the moderately susceptible MS star. Um, so in Alberta, ignore me, it's the MS. Um, there is no star in Alberta, but it just means that it has a little bit higher fusarium tolerance um, than the MS is. And the MS star is the highest rating um, that is available right now. What does CDC Defy look like when you're in the field? So if you've grown Spitfire, it'd be like a very tall, conventional Durham, like a conventional straw Durham. So it's a little bit taller, it'd be taller. I'm gonna show a picture later on of what it looks like, um, but it would be taller and it's also that hollow stem variety. So very similar to Spitfire in that sense, but it'd be a higher yielder and a better fusarium tolerance. Thank goodness, because Spitfire was not is not very good. Then we have our solid stems. Um, so then we have our AAC Stronghold and our AAC Grainland. I know, I think we have a poll. Uh, yeah, do we see soft light damage? No, okay. No, not very many soft light damage. Um, interesting, so that's great, love it. I hope that continues that way. But if it doesn't continue that way, we have some solid stem options. So AAC Stronghold, and I think we have Larry Penner on here. Um, very different than Defy, doesn't look as good in the seed guide. But that's where take the seed guide with a grain of salt. Stronghold thrives in southern Alberta, high moisture, high fertility. Um, it's the very good lodging, so it stands well, it thrashes well, it holds its color. Um, but then you look in the seed guide and it's kind of middle of the run. So take the seed guide with a grain of salt and talk to your local seed growers, lots of which are on here today, um, to if you want to are interested in growing a different variety. And then our different solid stem is AAC Grainland. So I've gotten some comments on Stronghold. It can be a little too short. Wouldn't recommend the PGR on Stronghold. Um, irrigation, we don't see a huge difference. Um, and of course, last year, there really wasn't much difference to be had. But if you want a little bit taller variety with a solid stem still, AAC Grainland. In the parentage of AAC Grainland is Transcend. So it has a very good, it holds its color well and great retention. Um, so two very good options for a solid stem. And why do I keep saying solid stem? Is the poll still up? Oh, no. So I would always just regurgitate the information of solid stem, hollow stem, soft light tolerance, because I had never seen soft light issues. Um, but this year, finally, I saw those little critters, those little buggers. Um, yeah, they're just kind of gross. Don't love them. Um, your best mitigation tool, if you do have soft light, highly recommend to grow a solid stem durum. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but basically what happens with soft light is they feed on the pith inside of this stronghold in Grainland. And pith is kind of like junk food. There's no nutritional value. So they kind of feed on it and then die and then they don't continue to climb. Whereas if you're in a hollow stem, um, they'll continue to climb up and then they cause more cutting. So 
your best mitigation tool if you do have sawfly in your area. And again, I highly recommend talking to an agronomist um, or anyone that's been scouting fields um, to ask them if they saw some sawfly because maybe you need to look at a sawfly um, or a solid stem durum. So highly recommend having those conversations because you never know. And lastly, I am going to put this picture in here because I love this photo. Uh, many of you are probably like, wow, that crop looks so nice and tall. Uh, this is on irrigation in Lethbridge, okay? I didn't see a lot of crops this tall last year either. Um, so this is at your highest moisture level. So you can see, like I said, CDC Defy is our tallest variety. It's that conventional um, straw, so it is quite a bit taller. It still stands quite well, but if you are growing it on irrigation, I would put a, put a PGR on it. Um, and then Stronghold is our shortest. Um, I mean, Grainland only looks really a little bit taller than it, so there isn't a huge difference, but Stronghold is definitely our strongest straw, um, and it's perfect because it's in the middle there, and then we see um, the Defy and the Grainland, and then Grainland has those black ons, so it looks nice and showy in the field, um, and it would be a little bit taller um, than your Stronghold, but not as tall as your Defy. Again, some of these, some of the seed growers are sold out of some of these products, um, but I highly recommend if you want to get some Defy, Stronghold, or Grainland, um, give me a call, and then we can try to find some for you. Like I said, some are sold out, but there is still some available out there if you are looking for a germ variety. And then to continue on of the animal theme, I'm going to pass it over to this Doug uh, animal that we have coming here. Yeah, let me introduce you to my little buddy, Doug. This is Doug, and uh, he's like our little mascot for uh, Douglas Oat. And uh, I love this oat, and I love this little, uh, my little buddy, Doug, here. And so what uh, what Douglas brings to us is um, a very comparable product to Summit uh, as far as height and yield. This is about five centimeters taller than Summit, but stronger straw. And in all the, the trials, we've been seeing considerable yield gain over the check. And it's not just in Manitoba, like I said, it's in Saskatchewan, Alberta as well. So our seed growers are seeing that, the small plot trial data is seeing that. And uh, I think it's really gonna be one of those coffee shop talk uh, oat varieties because of that uh, extra yield that it's really putting out, even on, on dry years like we've had here uh, this year. And well, in 20, 20 uh where where we had one of our seed fields it was there's a fair amount of moisture and it did very well there as well so like i said a little taller than summit but stronger straw it's got the crown rust mr rating so it's great in manitoba a little bit earlier than summit and uh like any new oat any new milling oat we have to get it through the whole milling assessment stage and so uh 2020 crop we had that milled at richardson pioneer in uh in Portage Prairie and everything went great. And then we're doing uh, the second run uh, this year. And so that was done between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, they're just uh, looking at all the data right now and all the lab analysis. And I'm hoping by the end of this week or the end of next week that we'll hear back from them that uh, AAC Douglas will be on their uh, preferred list as well. And then we'll have uh, a great new oat option. So this is, we're launching this one this winter. So this summer, the spring coming up will be the first year for Douglas going into the farm, going onto the farm with farmers, not just seed growers. So uh, yeah, check out AAC Douglas. So here's another cool animal. Uh, you know, when we talk about flax over the last, I don't know, eight, 10 years, we've had a lot of new flax varieties, but as I look at them and talk about them, they're, they all just have a very slight improvement over the previous varieties or over Bethune, uh, one or 2% yield gain. And finally now with CDC Roland, we've got something that actually we can say has a really big jump in uh, yield gain and characteristics over something like CDC Bethune. And one of the first things that we recognize and see is it's got a much bigger seed. And it's really hard to see in this picture, but if you have it in your hand, wow, is it ever bigger than, you know, especially than glass. It, it's a great big seed, just like CDC Sorel is. So that makes it really nice for uh, human consumption buyers. It makes it really nice for seed growers to get uh, a nice, clean, saleable product. So that's the first big plus. 
Second big thing about uh, CDC Roland is it's shorter than CDC Bethune. It's stronger straw than CDC Bethune. And, you know, I mentioned yield. Well, when it came through the co-op trials, it was 112% of CDC Bethune. So that was a huge yield gain, a whole new, uh, whole new game level. And as we look at the Prairie Province RVTs, we're seeing really nice gains as well. And as I talk to seed growers uh, throughout Manitoba anyways, they've definitely been seeing that bump in yield and straw strength and then that big seed size. So uh, we've had a very quick adaption, uh, adaptation to Roland from other varieties with our seed growers. And we're kind of anticipating, expecting that we'll see the same thing from farmers. So if you're uh, interested in flax this year, um, and you're going to want to try a new variety, definitely take a look at CDC Roland because it is the, bex, the next big jump in flax. Uh, here's our, uh, our pulse variety guide. It's kind of like a petting farm on the front page. And um, if you haven't seen this, you can stop by a local CCAN member or retailer and pick one up. And in it, you'll see all of our pulses. And I just kind of want to highlight uh, some of the yellow peas or the peas today. So we've got four yellow peas in here and uh, they're all high protein, so the end users really like them. The protein extractors really love them. The CDC Athabasca is one of your, your jumbo peas, so if you like big peas, that's the one. CDC Canary is an early season yellow pea. CDC Spectrum and uh, Luachco are both kind of medium maturity, but the Spectrum is a little bit earlier, and so we're seeing a little more of the Spectrum in Saskatchewan and the Luachco more into Manitoba. And I'm going to touch on Luachco with the next slide. But I just want to comment, we also have a couple of green field peas as well, CDC Forest and CDC Spruce. They haven't been quite as, uh, you know, green peas haven't been quite as popular, so there is still seed bills available yet. But when it comes to, uh, in Manitoba anyway, CDC Luachco is definitely where all the buzz is. And, you know, there's a few reasons for that. One, um, our seed growers have really been enjoying the, the long vines and how it really makes that beautiful mass. And it's a little bit taller of a plant than some of the other varieties that are out there. So it makes this really nice, easy to harvest of uh, a uh, plant stand and it's, it, it's holding together. It's standing up really nice. It's got a little harder seed coat, which is also fantastic for germination. So in Manitoba with the dry conditions, we're seeing uh, much higher germination levels on the watch go than some of the other varieties. And of course the, the end users love that uh, harder seed coat because it makes for a really beautiful sample and less breakage. And, and of course it's got higher protein. So that's what um, Roquette and Merit Functional Foods are all looking for. They want protein. So this is at the top of their uh, list as far as what they want to get with that tougher seed coat and that higher protein. So um, it'd be pretty hard to find in Manitoba right now, but um, maybe uh, in Saskatchewan or Alberta, you could still get yourself uh, a bit of CC Luachco. It's been yielding very well across the prairies as well. Uh, next, I wanna talk about, uh, just really quickly about three soybean varieties, Bork R2X, Heart R2X, and Young R2X. And this is Bork R2X. It's a, it's a nice, tall, beautiful, showy variety. You know, this is on 30-inch uh, rows, and you can see it, uh, it's touching a bit there in the middle. We got that nice, tall, stands well kind of a variety with, with exceptional yield. So this is our, our uh, biggest acreage bean right now, and uh, all of our seed growers have been super happy. Their customers are happy because it is bringing in those big yields. Um, it's not taking second place to, to very many varieties. It's got the RPS 1K Phytophthora resistant gene, which is kind of the popular one to grow in Manitoba right now. Uh, it's a good solid semi-tolerant rating for IDC. So it's, uh, it's been doing really, really well for that. And it's a medium maturity, about a 2400 heat unit variety. Heart R2X came out about a year after Bork. So we're still really getting a handle on this, but right away you can see that it is a bushier plant than Bork. It's it's still fairly tall, but not quite as tall as Bork, but you got that bushiness. So it will close in those wide rows a little bit better. And this one uh, has been showing some excellent yield as well. And it's been really surprising us uh, on uh, even out yield in Bork in a few fields. So it looks like it's gonna be a, a really big one for, for us for yield. Um, this one has the RPS1C gene for Phytophthora, which is really nice to, um, 
to have in our lineup because it's you know we're as we're learning more and more about phytophthora it looks like we should be rotating those resistant genes throughout our field because if we just grow 1k all the time then the uh the, the phytophthora strains that are resistant to that gene will build up build up build up pretty quickly and uh and that gene will no longer be good for us so it's good to to rotate between the different resistant genes uh heart r2x also has a semi-tolerant rating for iron chlorosis it, it'd be a little bit poorer than bork but it is still that semi-tolerant rating which is really nice to see and again it's a medium maturity at 2400 heat units the last soybean i want to talk about is young r2x so this one is quite a bit earlier it's a 2275 heat unit so this one we can push out into western manitoba and out into saskatchewan and one of the struggles we've had when we get to a, an earlier soybean and as we try and go west is sometimes they're too short and you can see here there's prints on that first picture on the left and uh, young is a nice tall plant which makes it uh, easier to harvest it keeps those pods up off the ground especially when you have that cool wet spring sort of that cool spring where you don't get a lot of internodal growth or if you have a, a real dry summer where it stays short and stunted young is uh, making itself quite easy to harvest and it hasn't been given up yield for that early maturity a uh, number of my seed growers were getting just as good a yield as bork on their farm so uh, early but big yield excellent when it comes to iron chlorosis this one is rated as tolerant and uh, that this is our first tolerant variety in, in western canada so i'm really pumped about that the you know the variety we're trying to beat with young is mahoney and you can see on that the far picture on the right that's mahoney and it's all yellowed from the iron chlorosis pressure and young is nice and green and dark and looking fantastic so we're uh, super pumped about that and it has the one c gene as well so uh, again we can rotate that out with uh, a bork or some other varieties that might have a 1k so so that's young tall great idc really nice yield and early Yeah, and that's all we kind of have for everybody. So if there's any questions, um, like we said, feel free to put in the chat. As you can see from the chat, it's some people are sold out of stronghold, some people still have some, and that's the thing. If you have your eye on a certain variety, um, being Durham, wheat, whatever, uh, make sure you give your local seed grower a call because some are sold out, some might still have them. And don't hesitate to give us a shout because we also know who has it and who doesn't, um, and we can gladly help you. So. If there, I don't think there are any questions. I, I have a question, Mira, before we sign off here. Yeah. In terms of, of the seed supply shortage, can you go over again what the, the best way is for people to avoid any potential issue there? What do you, what do you mean? Like in just, just, just in regard to avoiding any, any problems with not being able to get seed, anything like that, what's, what's the best way they, they can avoid that? Well, I would say call your seed grower right now and get the seed. So if you have, if you've listened to this um, and you are thinking, okay, I want to give Mahoney's a shot. I want to see if there's some low watch goes. I would call your local seed grower or go into your seed guide and see who's listed um, and call some of those people or just give us a shout because we also know who has it and who doesn't. Maybe just give well, us a call. <laughs> Well, you, you guys really have that countrywide network where, you know, if there's a shortage in one area, you can move seed around. And so you guys are really well equipped to, to help deal with, deal with those issues if they pop up, right? Yeah. And I mean, like Brad was saying, it's kind of funny because we have more seed, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and then Manitoba is coming and taking all the peas and just kind of slowly making a shortage but there's still some stuff out there so definitely yeah brad of course so it's uh yeah any other comments from anyone else i, I would say in manitoba it comes down to um you know a lot of our our secan retailers are close to a sold out position and so if you want something they're gonna have to bring it in and there's a lot of risk with bringing things in with the prices where they are right now so um it'd be best to start that process early and uh, make sure that you uh, you know what's available and what's what's not available and uh, if they're going to bring it in you know trucking all that kind of stuff is is tight so let's just get on that uh, right away yeah don't 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 leave it until march no. march is going to be uh, yeah if you wait till march you're likely uh, 
Um, either you're seating the bottom of the bin or you're seating out of your own bin. Um, yeah, act, act now, in other words. Very good advice. Well, thanks so much, guys. Great presentation today. Wonderful information. Thank you for all your time. And thank you to our audience for joining us today. If a question pops into your mind that, that you want to ask any of our speakers today, their contact information is on the screen right now. Feel free to call them, email them. The great thing about modern technology is there's no shortage of ways to get a hold of people these days. So please reach out. And as I said, this webinar will be available for viewing on our website, germination.ca, within 48 hours. And once again, I would just like to thank our sponsor again today is CCAN, of course. You can visit their website at CCAN.com. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day, and thank you to our audience. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. See you, everyone. Bye, guys.